Thank you for joining us for another episode of Ring Doubling and All the Things. Now, this may be a shorter episode, but I think it's going to be one of the most important. It's crazy important. Very important. We cannot emphasize that enough, and it has to do with contracts. And the thing about it that I'll start off by saying is we're all guilty of it. I mean, you scroll down through, yeah, 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 yep, yeah, I'm going to sign. This is one of those instances you definitely shouldn't do that. And although we probably are not going to talk about every different type of vendor today, because contracts are probably even more detailed for different types of vendors or a venue, I think what we want you to take away from this episode is it is well worth the time for you and maybe your significant other to review it. Correct. Although it may be a few pages long, it is in your best interest to do so. Now, I think, Sharon, where we can start with this is, number one, if you have a wedding planner, I would think they would need or should, whatever that right wording is, review that with you or in addition to, just to make sure your bases are covered. I, of course, want my clients to read the contract themselves and review it themselves. I've had clients that are attorneys. They yes. know more about contracts than I do. So, of course, I want them to read it themselves. But if you do have a wedding planner, I strongly encourage you to allow your planner to review the contract before you sign it. Just because there are certain things we're trained to look for. I know one thing that pops up just right now, a quick thought, is when a contract says linens included at a venue, most of the time, that's lap length linens, and brides don't want lap length linens. So when they put the measurement of that linen on there, most brides and grooms, they don't know that that's a lap length linen. But I can see that measurement, and I know instantly that's not a linen that's going to go to the floor. So just little things like that that, I'm, that I just look for, I know to look for. So yes, if you have a planner, it's part of our service. Might as well use it. I would have your planner review your contract. So one thing you just said, I'm sorry, Mike. One thing you just said there about included, that made me think, I'm assuming some vendors, and I'm not a big fan of that word, but assuming some vendors have things that are included and are not included. Every vendor has things that are and are not included. In most contracts, if they don't do something, it's normally listed in the contract's these are not included. My contract, and I can only speak for my own business, clearly states it is understood the planner will not. And then it lists everything that is just a hard no for me. Well, and the other thing I want to share with what you talked about, if there's something you don't understand or you question, highlight that, make a note of it, and get those questions answered before you sign on the dotted line. I don't know of any problem of asking questions for sure, about no. things that are in contracts. Ask questions. Ask as many questions as you want. I'm going to bring my contract up for an example. Um, you know, yes, usually, and I'm going back to what Sharon said. Sharon said, you know, you would be, she wants to look over it. Sharon knows my contract front and back. But over the years, I have noticed that someone will book with us or book with me the night of the consultation. And... I go through the whole contract I with them. So I'm reading it to them and then they automatically sign. But I would highly encourage you to take that contract home and read it again because you're there, you're excited about your flowers, you love what was presented to you, you booked with me, but you kind of forgot about all the little details that your head's with still in all your, the pretty exactly. of the flowers and not the logistics of the contract. And there's so many things on my contract, such as we don't take pictures of your bouquet and send it to you. You have the option to come to see it the day before, and that's the number one thing that that brother asked me the week of the wedding. I can't come in, so can you text me a picture or a video? Well, that's number two on my list that we do not do that, and I hate to say no. But there comes a time when you're dealing with 200 plus weddings a year, you've got to draw a line. Not that I'm being mean, it's just that pictures of flowers, especially, does not come across right. like they do Color in, in person. Color can be different yeah. and everything. 
Another thing is due dates. You know, make sure you know what the due date is. Um, or just three weeks out. And then usually, be honest with you, my staff is calling you the three weeks out. And I'm not saying you have to pay, you know, right then. But, I mean, at least follow the contract. There are so many things. And other vendors, DJs and everything, look and see. Maybe this is what they supply. This is what they don't supply. Don't assume that just because they're a DJ that they're going to have lighting above their DJ stand at your reception. Because you always see that. That doesn't mean it's always going to be there. When it comes to contracts, it's so important. You might as well go ahead and get the black and white out of the way at the beginning and not wait till three days before the wedding. Oh, I got to pull my contract out. That's think, not included. I think with each vendor type, there are certain things you want to look for. But some of the just generic biggies that I would look for as a planner is hours if your reception's four hours long and your ceremony's an hour and you've hired your dj for three hours you have a problem yeah so you want to look at hours with a venue you want to look at venue access hours how long do you have that venue well let's talk about that because vendors that's a big thing if you have that venue from two to midnight and you have got a setup that's going to take <laughs> your event planner or your florist or whoever it may be, four hours to set up. I've got a problem. You've got a problem. Don't assume that you're going to be able to get there at 9 o'clock right. in the morning because that is most not. Most you can. You cannot do that. I think that's yeah. one of the biggest things we run into. I also really, really recommend that you look at add-ons. You know, again, what comes with and what's going to be additional money. I really, really recommend that you understand the cancellation policy. Cancellation um, is big. Weddings get canceled or postponed sometimes, you know, God forbid that they do. Um, what's that vendor's policy? Where are you going to be once you've paid that deposit or retainer? Where are you going to be with that? Um, so I think that's really important. And I also think that liability is important. A lot of venues require you to have a liability policy yourself for that event. That's an additional expense. So you just kind of all those little ins and outs, you know, do they have open vendor policies or are they going to hold you to a list of their vendors? Do those vendors have to be licensed and insured? I had a client this past year, she was getting married in a venue that had an open vendor policy, but it required that any consumable food be prepared in a commercial kitchen by a licensed and insured professional. They wanted their aunt to make their wedding cake. Their aunt was their aunt. She was not a professional baker. She didn't have a commercial kitchen. They didn't realize the contract said that, and it became kind of a booger. So I think just knowing all those little things. Well, one of the things on my contract, and this is a big thing, is there's different stages that you can get so much money back and so on. But one of my thing is no matter how Say you book your wedding with us today and then and your wedding's in June of next year, but then when it comes to March, something happens and you cancel. Like you said, things happen all the time. But on my contract, anything that you have rented, such as hard goods, such as candelabras, stands, vases, any candles, arches, all that, you are still responsible for that. And I, I want to talk about this because... People don't understand, but if you booked your wedding today, I have marked all of that off my list for a complete year it's for that day. And then now it's all of a sudden is available. Well, but now that we, but now that weekend is already booked. So keep in mind what the vendor has to go through to to let that contract go. I run into the same thing with if a client has to cancel for me, you know, we're six months out. Well, I've probably already worked six months on your wedding. You know, I've helped you get your vendors. I've done a lot of leg work and ground work for your wedding and, and clients don't understand why I can't refund everything. But I have to be paid for the work already put in as well as a day that is off my calendar that I probably can't rebook because I booked my clients so far out. So I do think kind of seeing the vendor side of the contract is super important. So, and that's why contracts are so important because of details like this. 
Not that we want you to cancel your wedding, not that we even have to go back to that contract because we want it to be as smooth as possible. But just keep in mind, when it comes to something that comes up like that, that's the reason that contract is there. Something I wanted to touch on just really quickly, um, I just had added to my contract. Um, I don't I don't remember if you have one or not, but mine, because there's not just me, but I have a team of people and they're working that wedding that are part of the perfect plan events. And we just added a harassment and respect clause to our contract that gives us the ability to pull out and cease services if we feel like any myself or anyone on my team is it's never happened. I don't anticipate it happening, but I have known wedding planners that got in a predicament where they felt unsafe or they felt that their team was being treated poorly. And I think that it's important that a lot to know that a lot of vendors now are adding this clause because I think with everything that's happened over the last few years in the wedding world, people are just uptight and wound. And what we're not going to do is treat my staff poorly. Sure. So I think that let's go both ways. They protect us as, as businesses, and they also are made not just to protect us, but they protect the client. The client knows what's expected. They know what we it's spelled out. Every service that I'm going to offer is spelled out on my contract. They know what they're purchasing. And it's someplace for us all to revisit if there's a question. I was going to say something. You know, when I was in the wedding industry years ago, that was in the, the DJ lane, the DJ business. And one of the things is outside, you know, and equipment not being outside, you know, plan B's things like that. And I know in our area, there there's even been, it seems a trend with outside ceremonies and things like that oh, yeah. happening. And reviewing that part of the contract, does it have to be a covered area? All the things that go along, and I'm not just saying from a DJ standpoint, a band. Or, or, when you say band, matter. that sends off 50 light bulbs to me because you need to know the power requirements. I've had bands that had a problem because they plug in a hotel, they blow a fuse. That all needs to be spelled out. We all need to know where we are so that it's not wedding day. And the other thing I would say, and Mike touched on it as well, is your due dates. So when you, as a couple, review that contract and it says your numbers are due to the caterer 28 days before the wedding, that needs to be put in Google Calendar. That needs to be put on your kitchen calendar. That needs to be everywhere. Those aren't suggestions. They right. have to order food in. There's a lot of mine. You know, and he's taught me this. Flowers have to be ordered three weeks out for him to make sure that he has what he needs to create your vision. So as a planner, what I say, we sign with Floyd's Floors. I'm going to go home that night and then I'll planner. I'm going to put a reminder. Numbers due to Lloyd's Floors. So that the couple gets an email and I get an email. Those are important things and missing those or skipping those can mess up your wedding. And I like what you just said there. If you don't have a wedding planner involved, using a that tool yourself, like yeah. Google Calendar or whatever you use. Set a reminder to your phone. Siri, remind me, numbers due to Lloyd's Floors on this date. Absolutely. Well, the last thing I've added to my contract, and contracts can grow. They evolve. Each time you come up with a situation, a situation it's going to be added because we have learned as vendors that we've got to fix this. I was having a big, and I had some couples and moms get upset about this, but I have added that if you tell me to be at a venue at 12 o'clock to pick up your product that night and you've added another hour and then that hour passes and you've added another hour, well, then there's a charge for that because you're keeping your staff you're on. out of staff of three or four that I'm paying and I've got that time allotted, but you've added a whole nother hour on. That's a whole nother hour for four more And people. I'm the same way. I pay my wedding day team by the hour. So if you come up to me and say, hey, and you want to add on an hour, that's great, but you just cost me another hundred bucks. Okay, yeah. but let's also yeah. review that contract. <clears throat> Is adding time even an option? I'm going to be honest, I've seen in some, it's not an option. For me, it is, but every vendor has their own and, contract. And we're talking about this at a high level here, you know, because every contract is different. 
And you need to do your own research if there's clauses you don't understand, if there's things you don't understand and you don't get a clear answer from the vendor, you need to figure out what it is you need to do. One of the other things that um, couples need to really look at and that I always look at is my <coughs> contract that says that as your wedding planner, I require the following vendors to be licensed and insured professionals, florist, catering, and DJ, because that's where my liability is going to fall. So I think knowing those things as well, because if you hire Mike to be your florist, and your venue requires license and insurance and he doesn't have it, you're in trouble. So I think just knowing those vendor requirements is very important. And I really feel like we talk a lot about it. It really starts at the venue. You need yes. to know yes. the do's, don'ts, and I don't even mean that. I mean, what is allowed and what isn't allowed to be able, can, can you have a band at certain venues? And I'm saying that, but you know, can you have a chocolate fountain? I'm just giving examples. Well, there are a lot of venues too that are in residential areas. What time does the music have to stop? Exactly. Right, you that's, know, because you're going to tell everybody your reception's over at 11, but music has to stop at 10. Well, you also okay. talked about the cutoff time. We've dealt with this recently about the setup and teardown time of a band. You know, some places you only get so much time to get the hell out at the end of the night. Most places will offer you to buy more time. And that's fine. But again, that's you've got to figure that in when you're choosing that venue. That's an added expense versus a venue you would have all day. But you've got to keep in mind, too, that if there's one uh, place in Louisville that, that will let you add on time. But just because you made the decision to add on time there... You've got to think about the big picture. Your, Who's your, involved? Your band, your DJ, your floor. The big one's the bar. The bar. You can add them hours, but if that bar, if that bar closes, they're going home. I think yeah. the point of this is, is to really think about your entire right. vision. And if you think that, okay, we're I think we're ending at ten, we might decide like how. Just making sure you keep track who allows that, who doesn't allow it. And that's what it comes back to is what we started with. And not to take my word, it. but if there were ever, ever a reason to get a wedding planner, this yeah. is a good one. Mm -hmm. Because we are taught and educated to look at the whole day. I can't have the caterer and the florist both unloading through the same door at the same time. This is exactly the same thing. When I'm looking at a venue contract, I need to know what time is. Can I turn off music? Well, then I have to turn off DJ. I have to turn off bar. You know, so just, or if you can't, if a wedding planner is not in budget, someone to help you look at all these logistics. And, and it may even need to be something that a person that is a specialist in that field, I'm sure there are times that an attorney might need to look at something. And we're not here to say what you should and shouldn't do. Our advice is just read it thoroughly. If you don't understand something, get the answers. And Correct. we don't know exactly where you will need to go to get those answers. But before you sign on the dotted line, just make sure you understand. One thing to add, and I know we're trying to wrap up, but one thing that just popped into mind is don't ask a vendor to change their contract. I've been asked before, well, can you take this off or can you take this that off? And no, no. My contract was written by an attorney for a reason. So one thing I will, and yes, we are wrapping up this episode. I know, Mike already gave me the look. One thing I would ask, though, is if there's a change, a major change, a date change, a pillar change, I would call that, in an event, is that a new contract? Depends on what the Yeah, and this is vendor specific. Like, this isn't what you all say. Well, if there's an amendment, I'm sure there is something that the vendor as well as the engaged couples should have something in writing. For me, if the date changes, I do a contract amendment. That's I what I like about you because then that they send us and then we just sign it and they sign it and then we just Do you do an amended contract we if the date not. changes? And if they... But you have something in writing. Yes. We have some, they have to email me and say that this date has been changed and that will go on their contract. And then we'll change the date, but everything else will stay the same. And I think that's a good suggestion, <laughs> people. If you're making a change, 
and your vendors you're using do not do amended contracts, at least getting something in writing, in email, confirming those changes well, with your contract. And it's a very simple amendment. If a client is using me and they have to change their date, and unfortunately I got very good at this during the word we don't pronounce, or we don't say, um, but I would send it out to every vendor. And I would say, this is our new date. Your signature on this agreement assures continuation of same services and availability. Anybody can write that and send that out to their vendors just so you have something in writing that you made them aware of your new date and that what they've done for you or what they had promised to do for you, your previous contract will continue on. Yeah. And I'm sure we could have another episode about this. I know that I said it well ago, but that I think is what all three of us want is you to understand that you should take the time to read it. No. And Mike, I love what you mentioned about how you go through it with them and read it. Read us so they can ask questions then. But you even said, still go home and read it and if there's questions. But the other thing is, get the answers if there's something in there you don't understand. So we'd love your feedback. Even if you're a vendor listening and you want to share something with us that maybe we hadn't thought about, please just go to our website and send us a message or send us a DM on social media. And... We hope that you already subscribe either on your favorite podcast platform or on YouTube. So with that, and we would love for you to go on and leave us a glowing five-star review. She's so good at saying that. She is. I do love a good review. All right. Until next time. See ya.